Hi, I'm Muds and welcome to my video. So let's go back into the achievement pass. So the first one that um, we had come up is the Burthorpe Path. And this starts off with varying challenges that uh, give you a, a bit of a start into the game. So we've got call to adventure, banking and daily challenges. Uh, so we're going to start off with the banking one because that's a nice, uh, nice easy one. So open up your bank and learn how to deposit an item. Uh, now we actually learned this um, on Tutorial Island. So these are the banks, this is the closest bank here. So we'll just run over, click on our bank. So we can store the items we don't want to carry in the bank. Left click an item in your backpack to deposit it. There we go. Okay. When you deposited your item, click here to close your bank. Okay. Brilliant. So this is where we're going to be storing all of our items. Um, at the moment we've not got a great deal, but that doesn't matter. You've got varying different tabs here. You, what you can do with the here is you can actually separate your items. So if you wanted um, a tab that's got all the expensive items, you can customise your tab, you can choose a name for it. Uh, so if you were wanting to do specific bossing and you wanted certain items, you can put that into there. If you wanted specific skills, you can name it for that. Um, it's mini games, uh, distractions and diversions, that's what D&Ds are. Um, so yeah, so you can actually uh, there's quite a few different different ones to go for. I'm going to go for loot. That's where we're going to put our money. I'll close that for now. Or, if you wanted to, you could withdraw that into your uh, money pouch as well. Uh, now, with the bank, you do also have placeholders. And that's this item down here. So if you have that active, and you took out your bread, um, it will leave a placeholder, which is quite nice. Uh, what it used to do was it used to take the item out and you would lose that space in the bank. Um, so if you wanted to keep certain armour together, you would constantly have to be reshuffling your bank around. Placeholders, eliminate that. Um, and make it much easier. So I'm going to leave that in the bank for now. So that's that. That is our achievement done. Reward has been added to your coin pouch. Ten coins. Wonderful. All money helps. Um, so if we go to our inventory here, this is our backpack. Um, this is our coin pouch here. So we can see there are our ten coins that we've just earned. Um, and uh, you can bring this one up. This is a price checker, so if you've got some items in here, you can select them, put them in, and it will show you how much that item is worth. So, the next achievement that we're going to do is Call to Adventure. So, we discover why the Birthorpe Imperial Guard needs our help. Okay, so, so this was the guy, when we first uh, teleported in, this was uh, the guy that had the dotted line to. So, we'll speak to Toriel. Hello, and um, what are you after then? What are we after? Are we asked for adventure, something to kill, or fortune and glory? Uh, fortune and glory is always a good one to go for, but I think we're going to go for adventure. Well, we've come to the right place. Well, that's good to know. I am a slayer master. I train adventurers to seek out and defeat specific monsters. I'll identify suitable targets and assign you a quota. Berthop is surrounded by dangerous creatures. Are you eager to battle monsters for fun, heroism and profit? And Slayer skill is for you. Trolls are the real enemy in Berthop, but you need food and armour to survive against them. You should prepare before risking your life in combat. This is the last adventurer they sent me. He fought the trolls without armour or food. Don't be him. Oh dear. Poor guy didn't make it. 
In combat, you need to eat to live. Rabbits are a good source of food and they make a cute noise when they die. Go kill some bunnies. Aww. I don't want to kill some bunnies. But, but, but bunnies are cute. Cute? Ha, the little blighters are voracious vermin. The Berthop rabbit population is out of control. It is your ecological and civic duty to slay as many bunnies as you can. Plus, it's fun. Go on and try it. Okay, fine, farewell. So, defeat rabbits. One of three. Right, do we still have that dagger? Let's have a look. Worn equipment. Yes, we still have our bronze dagger. There we go. This is one we made on Tutorial Island. Okay, let's go kill some bunnies. Yeah, bunny, bunny, bunny. That's one down. So, a golden beam shines over your items. Royal rabbit. Now, this loot beam uh, will change in time. Um, and you will be able to filter it to highlight very expensive items that have been dropped, rare items that are dropped, and things like that. So the items you pick up go into your backpack, which is limited to 28 slots. After that, we need a bank. Let's kill another bunny. We've got to kill three in total. Um, let's give him a rabbit. See, that one didn't have a loot beam, so it was just highlighting the first... The first drop you had. There we go, there's our third rabbit. Go back to Turayal. Well done slaying those rabbits, how do you feel? Um, good, I'm ready to slay something else. I hated it, please don't make me kill bunnies again. Or can I kill more rabbits? That was fun. Uh, let's, let's, I'm hated it. I don't like killing bunnies. Bunnies are cute. Don't worry, I have a tougher assignment for you. But you'll need melee, armour and more food to take into combat. So let's get cooking. Excellent. So that's that one all done. So that's the call to adventure. Okay, so this is going to take us straight into the next challenge. Um, a next achievement. Uh, so you don't necessarily have to do it straight away. Uh, we will take this one. Um, so we are going to uh, we're going to cook the rabbit because we have rabbit now. We cook cook shrimp on a fire. Um, crayfish are very very similar um, and again an easy level. We learned that one in tutorial. So we're going to cook the rabbit. I think. Oh, and he's just given us some more ra more rabbit. Excellent. So you're less likely to burn food cooking on a range. You can use the range in my house to the southeast. Okay. So I think that was this house here. There we go. So because we're still quite low level, we're probably going to burn some of this. So it's probably why he gave us extra. Uh, so cook rabbit. So as we can see, this is the cooking menu now. This has really opened up already into various things that we can do. All the ones with this uh, red and yellow symbol on are all member items. Uh, so we'll have to wait to do those. For now, let's cook rabbit. Congratulations, we have learnt our f learnt our f earned our first level in a skill. So we're now level two cooking. That's that. Have we cooked all of our rabbit? No, we haven't cooked all of our rabbit. So we've done one one of six. Okay, let's continue cooking. And we've got another level. Level three. I have enough food. Now I need to mine enough resources to smith my armour. Okay. I'm going to follow the dotted line. Oh, there's more, bu more bunnies there. Look. And we're going to go into the Berthold mine. So, going on here, we need to mine copper ore and tin ore. This is something that we did, did before, so this is good. We know how to do this. 
Oh, there's our sparkly one again. Let's go for this. Seem to go quicker with that one. So we've got one. Just need a second one. Good work. If you'd like to know more about mining, don't hesitate to ask. I think for now we're okay. Uh, so now we want the tin ore. So this is this one here. Let's go for our flashing one. I know it keeps telling us far, but this one, the sparkly ones are good. They, we get through them a bit quicker. You've made progress towards tin soldier. Mine tin ore in the Berthold mine. Okay, so we have now reached level two. Oh, there we have our achievement as well. Level two mining. Excellent. So now we have to smith it again. So this is an, this is an outdoor furnace. This one, so this is looks a little bit different to the one we did before. So, put all the materials into there, click our bronze bar, begin the project. He who smelt it. <laughs> okay. Heat and smith a bronze helm at the forge and anvil. Okay, so again, we put our bars back into there, click the bronze bar. Uh, we'll go for a full helm, I think. A big project. So remember, this is our heat bar, this yellow one. And then the light blue one is our progress bar. So if the heat goes too low, we're going to have to reheat it and come back. But being a low level, I think this will be alright. Well, that's quality metalwork. I can see you're going to be a master smith. Cool. So now we have a helmet. So equip the bronze helm in your backpack whilst building a melee weapon. So we've got our dagger. Let's put our helmet on. There we go. Cool. So, the next one we've got, we can either smith a suit of metal, of melee armour, or we can go straight into the way of the warrior. So, I think we want to smith a full suit. I think the more we have, the better it's going to be, I think. So, I'm going to put our bronze bars back into the bank. Oh, bronze bars. So now we want Oh I don't want that one. Okay, okay, we're gonna make a chain body instead. I meant to go for the full one, but never mind. Um But chain body is better than nothing. We can always get more later. Okay, so this one's taken quite a while to do. Oh, we've got another level. That's good. So you can, as you can possibly hear, the tone has changed and our heat has dropped right down. So we reheat everything. There we go. And now it should be easier to work. Sound is quite important in the game. Um, if it helps you, great use it because you can hear the changes in like with smithing you can hear how it sounds different when an item's cooled down if you prefer to work without sound or can't work with sound then there are other other ways to keep an eye on how things how things have changed and how things have progressed okay so heat and smith a bronze ore box in the mist 
miscellaneous category of the smithing interface at the Forge and Anvil. Uh, click a bronze ore box in your backpack to deposit up to 100 tin and copper ore into it. Okay. We take a bronze bar, scroll down to the miscellaneous category, which is down here. So this is all the different things that we can we can smith. Bronze old box, begin project. Bronze ore box stores about 100 copper and tin ore, and the backpack only has 28 spaces, so it's a good idea to bring an ore box whenever you are mining. Very, very sensible. So, mine copper ore in the birth of mine, and mine tin ore. Okay, so we need three of each now. A sparkly one. Okay, so that's the three there. Kick the tin. Back to our sparkly one again. Now we'll go through three times, but when you are properly training in skills, um, it can get quite boring and quite dull. Um, but the hard work's worth it because um, it'll help you progress quicker into the game. And the best way to do it is to grab a couple of friends and, and work together. There's quite a few community events that will go on with uh, training and that. Um, so just have a, have, a, have a go at the skills and release the boredom with it a little bit because, as I say, it can get quite slow and boring when you are just sitting there hacking away at at your mining ore or hacking down trees and things like that. So I thought that was just a film on in the background. Something to keep you keep you busy. So we're gonna do we're now gonna do plate legs. Just got another level. Level three. Okay, it has cooled down, but we're so close to finishing, so I was just going to carry on with that. <laughs> there we go. So we've now done Smith melee armor. We've got two extra bronze bars, so we're going to put them into our into our forge. Here, yeah, there we go. We can store them in there for now. So I now have, if I put these on, I now have my helmet, I now have my chain body, I now have my plate legs, and I have my dagger. So I think now we can take on some trolls. Don't you? I think that's a good idea. So we're going to go for Way of the Warrior. Uh, so we'll go back to Turiel. Equipped with a melee weapon and melee armour with some cooked food in our backpack and we have cooked food here. We still got our bronze box, but that's okay, that, that can stay there for now. Okay, <laughs> we get an achievement just for doing that. Uh, excellent, so not only do you have food, a helmet and melee weapon, but you've even equipped additional melee armor, well done. Now you are prepared. It's time for you to learn some more combat techniques. 
Okay, so the combat in RuneScape uses a resource called Adrenaline. As you attack, you will gain Adrenaline. When you come out of combat, your Adrenaline will slowly drain back to zero. And when built up, Adrenaline can be spent on powerful attacks called Abilities. Threshold Abilities require 50% Adrenaline to activate and spend 15 Adrenaline when activated. Ultimate abilities require and spend 100% adrenaline. So abilities can be accessed on an action bar. An action bar is a set of customizable shortcuts to many actions in RuneScape. You can left click or keybind a slot to perform an action. So abilities are one of the actions on the action bars can hold. A threshold ability called slaughter has been added to your action bar. When triggered, your ability will go on cooldown. This is a short period within which you cannot use that ability again. Your action bar can also hold items as well as abilities. So drag cooked food from your backpack onto your action bar. So we'll take that over and we'll put that in the second slot there. You're ready to slay some trolls. Head into the cave to the north and defeat five troll truckers with melee attacks. Okie dokie. So, what we're going to do? I'm going to keybind this. So, I think. Okay, so actually, these are action bars for here. Now, you can. You can have quite a few action bars. <laughs> okay. Um. Uh, but only so many of them can be active, can be keybind, so or keybound, I should say. So for this one, we're going to change that to I prefer my keybinds um, along the lines of Q W E R A S D F and Z X C V. Um, but you can choose whichever feels comfortable for you. Some people go for numbers, some people uh, choose symbols and things like that. So my first one's going to be a Q. And the secondary action slot is going to be W. So I've unbound my camera slot um, because I don't use the WASD keys. I use my um, arrow keys. So I can customise these a little bit easier anyway. So I have Q and W as my action items. So let's go into here. Oh, this looks a bit of a mess. We've got trolls outside. People uh, not looking very healthy, but we're going to go in anyway. <laughs> so, troll chuckers. And we need to defeat five of them. So, head up to the north here. That's where our dotted line takes us. So, that is, that's a chucker there. So, we'll go for him. Ooh! Excellent. The raptor came to help. Okay, so most enemies drop bones when defeated. Bury bones to exper earn experience in the prayer skill. So we've got a blade storm cape, a cabbage, and some bones. So if you click on, on the loot area, I've already picked up the cape because um, I right clicked it. Um, so you can take all. So we've unlocked another path, but we'll worry about that in a minute. Now cabbage at the moment is one of those items that we don't really need <laughs> too much. Um, it can be used as emergency food, um, but generally cabbage you can drop. So this one's actually dropped coins. So let's pick up the coins. So how many do we get? We've got two coins. And we've got the bones. Um, so as you can see, this is this is detecting items sort of in a little square around us, really. So we're going to take that one. I'm going to take that one. So I picked up, picked up coins and unlocked another path. So I've got another three of these to to defeat. Okay, so we we'll take, can take those bronze arrows. That will be a help later on. Mm. 
we will need arrows when we start training range skill. Okay, I've got some more coins. Three coins this time. Now anything you don't pick up will eventually disappear. It takes a couple of minutes, but it will eventually disappear from the map. For a certain amount of time, um, the drops are only visible to you. Um, so therefore, obviously you get first pick on, on the items. Uh, like this cabbage here, if someone else was here after minute or so um, it would then be visible to them and they would be able to come and pick it up unless you're an Iron Man you can't pick up other people's items um, that's one of the restrictions so let's go back to Churio well done defeating those trolls are you ready to move on I am ready to move on Time to learn a bit more. So, when attacks gain adrenaline, these attacks are, are abilities too, known as basic abilities. Your basic abilities are currently activated by a special action bar, this yellow box. This action bar is able to run an automated ability firing system called Revolution. Each attack cycle, Revolution will activate the leftmost ability that is not currently on cooldown, as long as you meet its requirements. Revolution is fully customizable in your combat settings. So we'll go to here. Okay, run right, those. You can find the full suite of your abilities in the ability book grouped by combat style. To find out what each ability does, hover over the ability to display the tooltip. You can drag abilities from your ability book to your action bar. Drag the eat food ability from your constitution ability book to your secondary action bar. So that's that one. Take some time to explore what your abilities do and set up revolution to your liking. Speech to L again when you are done. I think we'll stick with how we've got it because uh, this is... It's, it's easy to start with what they give you. Um, and then as you progress further into the game, you'll learn which abilities work best with which monster. Um, but as I said, you can hover over each of these and it'll tell you what, what it will do. Um, of course, you've got member items as well, so um, just got to keep an eye out for those that so you wouldn't be able to use them in a free-to-play world. So you're injured a little bit. To heal, you should eat some food or stand near a bank. I'm going to save our food. So, let's go stand near a bank. Okay, so now we're fully healed. As you can see, we're back up to a thousand health points. We'll go back to Turoya. Now you're familiar with your abilities, you'll need a proper challenge. There's a really big troll called Morningstar in the cave to the north. Go take them down. Okie dokie. So we'll go back into here. This guy looks very on ominous with his uh, rune armor on. So this is the guy that we've got to kill. Okay, he's level 10. Okay, he's quite strong. Corporal Ruth hastily gives you all the food he carries, then flees the cave in terror. <laughs> okay, he's given us a load of sandwiches. Excellent, fine. That's okay. <laughs> so hopefully that food will help. So we've got to keep an eye on our health level here. And you see these are all starting to fire off already. Okay, we're doing alright so far. So we can fire off our own ability here with the keybind. That helps. Okay, so these sandwiches heal 250 points. I want to have one of those now. 
Oh, we've got our next ability, this one here. I'm going to use that. Okay, I'm going to have a sandwich because my health is starting to run a little bit low. Might have to have another one in a second. But I think we might be okay. Oh, that's no, maybe not. So that red border around there is warning you that your health is getting low. So that's okay. So I've, I've still got low health, but I can go to a bank now. So what have we got here? We've got a bronze offhand mace, which um, our character will then hold in their left hand. Because um, for some reason all the characters are right-handed. Uh, <laughs> So you, you can, there are certain weapons you can have one in each hand. Um, so the offhand item, we can wield that at the same time as the dagger here. So we can actually end up fighting with both hands. Okay, so back to the trail. You defeated their leader. Wow, I didn't expect you to actually survive. Hmm, great for the vote of confidence, sir. Uh, you've definitely proven your un understand the melee combat. Path complete. Excellent. We have an extra three rabbit sandwiches too. Range combat is a little tricky. You'll need arrows and a bow to fire them. You should craft your own arrows with feathers from chickens and your wood cutting, fletching and smithing skills. You could get some arrows from a shop. I hear the corporal booth inside the troll cave is giving out free arrows to new adventurers. Or I could assign you more creatures to slay, such as troll chuckers, and they drop arrows. We have already got a couple of arrows. Okay, so we're back after just a short break. Um, we're going to jump back into the Berthold path. Um, so the first couple for here. Let's see what we've got left. We're bows and arrows, fletching arrows... Troll Patrol, Wealth, Prayer and Daily Challenges. So we're going to continue on. We've been doing a lot of the stuff with combat at the moment. So we're going to go on with um, the Fletching Arrows because then that will tie in with Bow and Arrow task after. So we'll start with Fletching Arrows. So the aim is to go and chop down a tree to get logs. So we've got a tree right here. Let's cut this one down. And we have our logs. Craft the logs in your backpack, choose knife and then arrow shafts. So click on the logs to craft them, click the knife and then arrow shafts to fletch. Okay, that's that one. Um, next one, uh, chicken out. By killing chickens, collect the feathers. Okay, so we now need to find some chickens. Got plenty of rabbits around here. This is actually going to take us uh, to where the chickens are. So I've still got my draw distance quite low. Um, that's why it looks sort of unclear and foggy here. I'm just going to keep running. Uh, we're actually running south at the moment, almost towards Taverley, uh, to this chicken pen here. So we're going to kill some chickens. Chickens are fairly easy to kill. They don't tend to bite back too much. I'm going to take all of these. Okay, so our backpack is almost full. You can deposit your items in any bank at Gillenor. We'll go up a bit further and bank those in a moment. One thing we can do, we've got a cape here. We're going to just wield, wear that. Um, so that's on our back. That's one more inventory space we get back. Um, and the other end is actually the arrows, the arrows we have picked up. We can wear those even though we're not wearing anything else that has range items on it. Okay, so we've got a new level. we got um, our strength level and our defence level. And in turn, that's raised our combat level. So combat is, is linked to various different skills. Oops, one more chicken. 
Um, there's a lot of different skills that um, you can raise to raise your combat level. Um, and we'll improve on that in time. Um, okay, so I can't actually pick out these bones and this chicken at the moment. So what I'm going to do. Now these, remember, the, when we drop items, there is a timer on it. So I'm going to see if I can run down, drop some of these items into the bank, and see if I can run back and get that chicken. Spare chicken and bones. So this is the bank here. We passed the tabby lodestone. Um... Sometimes it was quicker just running, just for how close we were. Let's go to the bank. So all we do, if you right-click on an item, you can deposit all, deposit all the bones, deposit the ore box. We don't need that in the moment. Deposit all. Or other that, you can also use these buttons down here. So if I select all here, it will automatically deposit all of the items. I'm going to keep these two here because we're going to be needing those. Okay, so I'll run back quickly. See if I can get that chicken that we dropped. We just dropped a potato. There we go, let's see if we can get it in time. There we go. So we've got that. So, feather arrow shafts in your backpack. All we need to do with that is to click on the arrow shafts and it automatically feathers them for you. Here we go. Okay, so again, we've got to go back into Birthfoot Mine um, and get some copper and tin ore. So that's just up to the north here. Is that one that glows? It makes it go a little bit faster if you click the ones that are glowing. Um, it just helps your mining speed a little bit. Yes, it means you have to move around a little bit more, but that's okay. You've got mining level as well. Okay, back outside to uh, make another bronze bar. Eat it at the forge. So let's let the bronze scroll down to range. There we go. So this is the bronze overhead. Uh, so this is actually going to make all of the three bars we have into bronze arrow heads, um, but that's okay. We can save some up and we can make more arrows afterwards. There we go. Okay, so now what we need to do is tip the headless arrows in my backpack with bronze arrow heads. So we just tip the headless arrows and add tips. There we go, we've now made 15 arrows. So I'm going to put them into our quiver, same as we did earlier um, with those couple of arrows. Talking to Terrell. Now we need a bow to fire those arrows. Use a wood cutting and fletching skills to craft a short bow. Okay, so pick flax from a flax field. Again, further south. Maybe you can always move your camera uh, to different positions uh, so that you get a better view on what you're doing. But 
but these dotted lines will always help you and guide you to where you need to be, especially in the early parts if you don't know where you're going. Um, it's ideal to keep following. So we've picked our flax from the flax field. Uh, we now have to craft a bowstring from flax at a spinning wheel. So uh, I believe this is our first attempt at crafting. Uh, so we'll be starting a new skill. So craft our bowstring. There we go. We have our bowstring. So again, we've got to cut down a tree to get some more logs. And this will form uh, the basis of making our bow. Okay, craft the logs in your backpack, choose knife and then short bow and a U in brackets. The U in brackets means unstrung. Um, that disappears when you put the bowstring onto the bow. So whenever you're fletching items, um, particularly from the logs, you're always going to be making the unstrung bows to begin with and then adding the bowstrings. So you can either click on either the bow or the bowstring for this. Uh, to make the short bow, and there we go. Okay, equip the short bow in your backpack. So we'll do that. Now the only downside at the moment is we are wearing. Um, so we're going to show Terrell my new bow, because why not? We're going to be proud of our bow. Uh, the only downside at the moment is that we're currently wearing melee armor, but we're actually using the range skill. Um, we can eventually make proper range armour um, and that will help boost your uh, range stats as you as you go through or make you give you a little bit more defence so here we go this is the explanation when using a ranged weapon you should remove that melee armour you're wearing it's harder to move in and it will make your ranged attacks less accurate Okay, so about that for a second. So we'll take off the melee armor. I believe the cape's okay, but we'll find out in a second. Oh no, he's going to make us take that off as well. There we go. You are equipped for ranged combat. Ranged combat uses physical projectiles. It covers weapons like bows, crossbows, and thrown projectiles. Attacking from a distance gives you an edge when opponent has to reach you and attack you. Get a low obstacle between you, and it's like shooting cows in a paddock. Okay, I guess we're shooting cows in a paddock. <laughs> so we're coming further down. Uh, we have to defeat five cows from outside of the paddock. Uh, so the thrown projectiles that um, Terrell was talking about is um, things like throwing knives, um, javelins, things like that. You can use those to attack with as well. So that's one cow. So we've got our ranged abilities down here. And again, they're firing automatically because they're on revolution. We're not needing any food because the cows can't actually reach us because we have the fence in the way. And that's part of the advantage of range. Keep that distance and you won't you won't take damage. So we're gonna go in and hopefully the loot area should pick up the majority of this all in one go. Uh, so that's all five of them there. There we go. So it picks up everything and puts it in our backpack. Then we return back to Toria. Well, def well done defeating those cows. Are you ready to move on? I think we are. We can always go back and kill some cows later. Okay. So, uh, we can go on to um, 
the the magic ones now um, which is the third section of combat um, combat comes in a triangle so you have melee range and magic um, and each one will defeat the other easier than the opposite way around so we will go on to the magic one here so get air runes from apprentice clara in the berthop magic shop or by defeating troll shamans so we can either practice a range oh we've had 50 bronze arrows added to our inventory So the third and final combat style is magic, you'll need a magic weapon. You can craft a magic wand from cloth, thread and logs. Shear wool from sheep and then spin it and weave it into cloth. You'll also need air runes to cast combat spells. Now this could be tricky as the air rune crafting altar is far to the east near Varrock. We will, we will find a way. The magic shop in Berthop has a limited stock of air runes. So that's what it's saying, talk to Clara. Runecrafting is how wizards create their own runes, but I'm far from familiar with that skill. So that will be something we will learn a little bit further down the line. So they could assign us more creatures to slay that drop areas, such as troll shamans. Um, or we can go and get it from the magic shop. I think we'll go and get it from the magic shop this time. As you wish. We will have plenty of time for leveling up our skills. So, ah, the little pretty cat. It's Bob. Talk to Bob. What does Bob say? Meow. Uh, yes, can I have some runes, please? I need runes. Okay. So here we go. So we've got 30 free air runes. Let's hope we can get some other free items too as well. Take care. Come out of that. Okay, so we have our air runes. Right, chop down a tree to get logs. And chop down any tree, let's chop this one down. Pointy stick. Okay, I need to deposit some of those items again. Let's put all our melee stuff in there. Uh, we'll put our arrows in as well. So you'll notice I'm keeping bones um, at the moment. That is because further down the line we will need it for prayer, for the prayer skill. Uh, so whilst, we ki whilst we've been killing things, it's always best to pick up the bones. Because um, you get free items from it. Okay, so on our tool belt, if I go into um, our worn equipment, down here you have an option for tool belt. Uh, now this already gives you a load of free items on your tool belt, which is a great way of starting. Um, when this first came out, you had to add everything into it. Um, so we've got our pickaxe, hatchet, hammer, chisel, knife, tinderbox, saw, pestle and mortar, machete, watch, chart, sextant, shears, noose wand, tongs, incense burner. These ones that are shaded out, we will collect further down the line. Um, some of them are quest items. All well, the fishing ones we've got, we've got fishing rod, crayfish cage, small fishing net, big fishing net, fly fish rod, harpoon, lobster pot and barbarian rod. They've already been added uh, for crafting. We've got needle, glass bone pipe, amulet mould, bracelet mould, necklace mould, ring mould and tiara mould. And then these ones are, um, I think some of them are quest items. Um, I know the sickle mould is a, is a quest item. Rod clay mould is a quest one as well. Oops. Uh, farming. Got some of our bits sorted already. We've got a rake, a seed dibber, a spade, gardening trowel and secateurs. Um, eventually we can get a magic watering can. 
So yeah, we haven't got any items. Um, cause we haven't really started the Slayer skill yet. And these we you can use to help with your kills. Um, some of them will, things like the Bone Crusher, will automatically crush bones and give you prayer XP as you're doing your killing. Invention, we can't do anything with Invention yet. Uh, the reason being is Invention is a locked skill until you have certain levels in other skills. Um, Archaeology is a new one. Uh, so this is something that um, is still very new to the game. Um, I believe it's just come up to it six months at the time that we're recording this. Um, so we will have a proper look through those when we actually start learning the archaeology skill. So for the time being, we need the shears because that's what we're about to do. We need to collect wool by shearing sheep and we need four of them. So let's give all these sheep a haircut. Oh no, the sheep manages to get away from me. Wait, you're standing right in front of me. <coughs> okay, so that's one. That's two. You see, the sheep... Uh, it's a bit like Minecraft that sort of... The, the sheep do regrow. The fur, no, he's got away. Let's try this one. Here we go. So I managed to get four. Uh, so now what we need to do is spin the balls of spin balls of wool at a spinning wheel. Go back to our spinning wheel over here. And we'll spin the wool. Okay, so we have our four balls of wool. Next we need to weave it. Weave balls of wool into strips of cloth at the loom. This is the loom here. And we have two balls of wool. We'll make one piece of cloth, so four that we've got we'll make two. Okay. Right click, then trade with the tanner to get free thread. So we've got to trade with the tanner. There we go, there's our free thread. So it will take all the free, free thread. That's really hard to say, actually. Right, craft a wizard one in your backpack from the strips of cloth and logs. So craft a strip of log. Craft a wizard one that's already selected. And make. Now, unfortunately, we don't get many cool spells like you would in uh, in Harry Potter, uh, but we do have the chance to work with magic spells. So we've actually had some cloth given back to us for completing that. So let's show Tyrell my new wand. So let's make sure we're fully prepared for magic combat. Magic combat uses spells. Elemental combat spells damage your enemies, but your spell book also contains utility spells, such as lowering opponents' combat abilities or teleporting around the world. To form magic, magical attacks, we must select a spell to cast. Okay, so we'll click the airstroke spell to set it as your auto cast. So all we need to do, you can see this red flashing box around it. We're now ready to move on. Magic combat uses spells. Elemental combat spells damage your enemies. But he's just said that. Let's carry on. <laughs> Let's take a look at your magical abilities. Speak to me again when you're done exploring your spell book. Okay, so we've got... Um, again, this is all changed to the magical abilities. Um, and we have them up here. You have the combat spells. Got lots of different spells here. 
And again, you can you can resize these if these, if these are difficult to see. You can resize them to make it easier. These are all different home teleports. These will take you to all different places. Um, but we have unlocked the lodestones, so that does help a lot. So our skilling ones. Um, enchant pieces of jewellery. We can turn bones into bananas, because why not? Uh, you can use telekinetic grab, which means you can grab things from far away or from items that are, you can't actually physically access. Superheat items, so we can actually um, create bars from ore just in our inventory. Um, we can charge orbs. Um, more enchanting. A level alchemy as well is um, a good one to aim for. Um, it will, when you use this spell, it turns your items into into gold. Uh, so you can buy things. It's cool. Okay. That's just a quick overview of that. I'm going to bring that back down to size there. So some monsters are weak to certain elements. For example, gelatinous abominations are weak to air spells. How about we slay some for me as a slayer task? Okie dokie. In the enchanted cave to the south, strange creatures of ooze are gathering. The only way to defeat a gelatinous abomination is to rip out its heart with spiked gauntlets. That sounds disgusting. You can get spiked gauntlets from my shop. Cool. Okay, let's get some spiked gauntlets. So let's trade. There we go, there's our gauntlets. Cool. So we'll put our gauntlets on, ready. Okay. So right click, then get task from Turao to be assigned a slayer task. Get task. We'll start you off hunting gelatinous abominations. You will need to kill five of them. Okie dokie. You also need an enchanted gem. It allows slayer masters like myself to contact you and update you on your progress. Don't worry, if you lose it, you can buy another one from any Slayer Master. Okay, great. Oh, wait, there's some, got any tips for me. Yes, I have something written down here. The last gelatinous abomination I killed, I found air spells took them down eff effectively. To any Slayer task that you get, you'll always get a tip from uh, the Slayer Masters. Uh, sometimes it'll be where they're located, uh, what weapons you should use against them, and things like that. So it's until you're used to what kills what, um, always speak to the Slayer Master and see what tips he have. So his mindless creatures attack relentlessly once provoked. There is a core flowing in their chest and they can only be beaten by bursting this core wearing spiked gauntlets once you have damaged them enough. Okay. Delastinous abominations are found in the Enchanted Cave under the lake to the southeast of here. Yes, it's going to give us some, some dotted path to go and find them. So this will just come in around the other side of the lake that we normally come on. And the cave looks to be just here. It's this mass here. Can't really see it. There we go. So here's the cave. Oh, hello, Ariane. I'm here. Tureo sent me. The creatures here are very unusual. I don't think they have a natural origin. I'm Ariane, an adventurer and sorceress. I'm Mud Gaming, bravest of the brave. Hmm, not sure about that yet. Just yet. Name's Mud Gaming, intrepid adventurer. Well, call me Mud Gaming. I monster hunter. I think I'm an intrepid adventurer. Ooh, okay. How may I assist you, my lady? <laughs> Let's come on. Okay, so we've got two tasks at the moment. So hopefully we can kill one at the same time. Right, here we go. 
Oh, even Ariane's helping that. There we go. Let's take some coins. <laughs> Ariane's killing them before I even get a chance. Okay, run over and go on. Rip out their middle. There we go. So we've got a raw potato. Climb out of my way. <laughs> okay, let's see. Let's see if we can get these killed first. I like that she's helping. This makes this a lot easier. You won't always get help on your slow task. <laughs> Oops, what have we dropped? So this is bronze salvage. Okay. Bronze salvage is an invention item. Uh, so again, we're going to have to wait a little bit before we can do anything with that. This one is a leather cowl. Leather cowl is part of the ranged armour. Uh, so that's good starting for our, our ranged equipment. So let's explore the cave. So what have we got? We've got a cabbage. I don't think we need to pick up a cabbage. So let's explore the cave, see what we've got. Oh, I missed that, sorry. Cast the Confuse spell. Okay, my bad, I kind of uh, clicked through that. Cast Confuse on Magic Stick. Okay, well, we're fighting the best we can. Let's keep going. Cast Confuse again. Cast Confuse. Does that work? Job well done. There are many more mysteries in Gillenwell deserving my attention, so I'll put you in. I'm sure we'll meet again. Farewell. Farewell, Ariane. And just like that, she's gone. Okay. So unfortunately I skipped a little bit in that, um, but um, we've, managed to com we've managed to complete the introduction to Berthold. Uh, we haven't yet finished the entire achievement path, but that's fine. We will continue to do this. So, for the rest of the birth thought path is work your magic, wealth, prayer, agility, hunter, and daily challenges. Uh, so we'll start off with um, the wealth one. What? Hang on, whoops. Okay, travel to Lumbridge. We don't want to do that just yet. We want to continue off in Birthorpe. So, craft a set of wizard robes to protect you during magic combat. I think we'll do this one, actually. So, craft a wizard hat in your backpack from the strips of cloth. We got the cloth from one of our last achievements. So, do a wizard hat. Craft a wizard, wizard robe top in the backpack from the strips of cloth. Oh, I've actually managed to craft three. Okay, so we need some more... Uh, we need some more wool. Let's go back to our sheep. Get some more wool. 
I didn't mean to craft three, <laughs> three wizard hats. <gasps> Never mind. Come on, little sheep. That's better. I'm not sure how many we need, so I'm just gonna. I think we've got six there. That should do us enough. Oh no, we've just had an achievement. Look, this is one of the hardcore Iron Man modes. Um, so, phone guy has just died for the last time in hardcore Iron Man mode with a skill total of 2,272, fighting against an Ioworth guard. Oh dear. Well done for getting that high. That's quite a good skill total, that. Considering we're only starting the game, our skill total at the moment is only 49. So he's got 2,272. That's pretty good going. Well done. So we're just going through uh, weaving the balls of wool and making the cloth again. Okay, so now we can make a top. Need two strips of cloth. Okay, so we may need one more to create the bottoms. We'll just go. Yes, I need one more bit of cloth. So we need two more wool. Okay, so that is um, level two. No, it wasn't. That was level two of crafting, which has given us our level fifty milestone. There we go. I'm not sure if that's a a global broadcast or not. Possibly not <laughs> for that level. For that level. Okay, so we should be able to now. Create the skirt. There we go. So that is now our full set of magic gear. Let's put it on. There we go. I definitely look more like a wizard now. There we go. My spiked gauntlets on still. <laughs> okay, so the next path that we have is uh, the wealth. So we'll start on that one. So trade with. Corporal Booth in the Troll Cave and complete the shop tutorial. Unless you selected um, one of the uh, Iron Man modes. I think you can still trade with shops. I'm not 100% certain on that. Um, but you'll be very limited on what you can buy. I do know that. So we're going to go into the troll cave here, and Corporal Booth is just on the inside here. So we trade with him, and this should give us a shop tutorial. So Ringscape contains a variety of shops where you can buy and sell items. These are the items the shop is selling. You may need to scroll down to see more. Now he's only got a small inventory here, so that's okay. To purchase an item, simply left click it. Okay. And then click buy or take. So with the free items we have take option and if we wanted to get some bread we will have a buy option. To sell an item click the sell tab. So we can see all of the bits in the in our inventory here that we can we can sell. Um, the ones that have NA against it means that they can't be traded uh, in the shop. So we select whatever we want and then we'll click this button will change to sell. And it will tell you how much, what, how much it will cost here, and how many coins you have. Okay, so that is the shop. So what we're going to do? I'm going to take these three items because it's always useful to have three items. I'm going to do that for now. So there we go. We have done our shop tutorial. Okay, the next one is 
uh, the introduction to prayer skill. We're not doing this one at the moment. This will take us out of birth up. We want to complete the birth up path first. So prayer, introduction to prayer skill. Uh, bury bones from our backpack. Okay, so I've put all of our bones into the bank for the time being. <laughs> so let's go out to the bank. Run, run south. I know it looks like I'm running north, but always keep an eye on your, uh, your compass here. I'll tell you which direction you're running in. So I'm going to do, I'm going to use this button here which will empty everything into my bank. Um, and we will take out Morningstar's bones because we don't often, um, it's probably only a one time thing that we're going to get those. Uh, now for, for the time being it has left a placeholder, we don't want to take have that so we'll take that out. Um, for the normal bones, um, we will leave a placeholder because I don't know how many we'll need right now. Okay, so to bury your bones, all you do is click on them. It buries them in the ground. So there we go. So it had to be normal bones that we had to do right now. Um, prayer. Now we did a little bit of this on Tutorial Island. To activate a prayer in your prayer list, all you need to do is use the prayer abilities, which is the star then activate it. So there we go. And this is where our prayer level will go down the longer we use these. It's at 28 at the moment and the longer we have the prayer on the more we will drain our prayer points. If we turn that off uh, prayer and altar to restore your prayer points. Generally the altars are in churches um, around the game there are some standalone altars around as well. Okay, there we go. And we have some prayer potions as a reward. Fab. Okay, um, as we're here, we're going to go on to the agility skill. Um, Agility, as you may expect, is doing lots of exercise. Uh, it tends to be running laps on agility courses, or as you may know them in the real world as obstacle courses. Um, the, the lower level ones, you don't tend to hurt yourself too much on them. Um, higher level ones, you will have to take food with you because you can fail an obstacle. Um, so depending on how much health you have at the time, uh, it will be worth having a little bit of food on you just to keep yourself going. So, um, lovely it's raining, just like it is in the real world at the moment. Um, okay, so walk along the log beam to start a lap of the birth up agility course. And this will start us on our agility skill. So here we go, it lost our balance, oh dear. I wonder if it's because it's raining. Now for this one we didn't lose any health, that's good. So we're not going to need any food. So we just follow the course, follow the arrows here. Um, generally it will tell you where the next obstacle is going to be. Um, so we've done that, we will walk across the balancing ledge. Okay, so just keep following the, following the arrows round and you'll see each of the obstacles as you go. Now, funnily enough, obstacle courses is where I get my nickname of MUDS um, because I do obstacle courses in real life. Uh, so, yeah, this technically should be my skill, <laughs> really. Um, but it is good fun. Uh, so, yeah, so we have obstacle courses in game. And they, that was that easy, just doing that course there. Um, it's almost got us uh, an agility level. Um, but we have completed a lap of the course. So, we're slowly getting through these paths, you can see 18 out of 23 that we've done. Okay, so the next one is Hunter and the Hunting Skill. So, we need to uh, get a free bird snare from Aleth. Beast Stalker. Aleth Beast Stalker. 
Oh no, she's this side. Okay. She? He? I don't know. Let's find out in a minute. Okay, so this is Aleph here. Okie dokie. I need hunter supplies. So here we go, there's our bird snare. So we'll take that. So stand near the crimson swift birds and left click the bird snare in your backpack. So you can see them all flying around here. I think we'll go out here. We'll lay the snare. Wait for a crimson swift to fly into your snare, then retrieve it. If the bird breaks the snare, pick up the snare and reset it. So all we have to do is wait. Oh, there's one. There we go. Path complete. Okay, we have a bird in our snare. Okay. So daily challenges. Is this the last one? Okay, daily challenge. Basic training. Track complete and turn in each of the ba basic daily challenges. Okay. Right, to find our daily challenges, we go on to, uh, I believe it's this list here. And then, yes, there we go. And then we go on to challenges. So we've actually done a couple already. Um, so we've done the basic combat challenge. We've done the basic woodcutting challenge. Um, we're already part way through the mining challenge. We're already part way through the prayer challenge. So we only need to do three more of these. So we'll do those quickly. One, two, three. Okay, so there we go. So basic prayer, claim a free reward from challenge mistress or the challenge tab in your adventurer's interface. We'll do that in a moment. Um, so we've done the prayer, mining, uh, mine copper or tin ores. We only need one more of those. So let's run over to the cave again. and we'll just get one more of these. There we go, there's a glowing one. Okay, this character's got some very cool wings. Look at that. So you can actually see what another what another player is wearing if they have the right um, settings. So you if you examine the character it will show you actually what their overlay is. So they've got a golem head, torso, mystic gloves, and the Fury's agent wings. That's the wings that he's wearing at the moment. Uh, so that shows you what he's got on. You can also have a look at the skills as well. So they're quite advanced in a lot of the skills. Um, I'll tell you what clan they're part of. Uh, I'll tell you how far into uh, sort of all their different stats and things like that. And then this will tell you how far into the game they are. So they've actually done quite a few achievements on that. Okay, so our last skill, the last challenge, was a fishing challenge. Now we haven't done much in the way of fishing at the moment. So this is pet shrimp or crayfish, and we need five of those. So let's go out and we'll find the nearest fishing spot, which is just down at the lake here. Okay, so remember we look for the bubbles. Uh, we can either, these ones we can cage. So these ones I believe we get crayfish from. There's one, there's two, 
three, four, and five. There we go. Okay, so we have now done all of the challenges. You can see they're all in green now. So, what we'll do is we'll claim the reward uh, for these. So, each one comes with a reward. Uh, so, we've got combat XP lamp for the combat one. We will get prayer XP for the prayer, fishing XP for the fishing one, mining XP for mining, and we're cutting. We're cutting XP for we're cutting. Okay, so if we claim rewards, that will do all of them all in one go. Okay, so challenge Mr. Spara. Nice work, you've ticked off all my basic challenges. One more thing I hear, Corporal Keemans in the Imperial Guard camp has a fun reward for you. Okay, cool. So, we've reached level, mi level 5 in mining. Level 5 in woodcutting. And we've also got combat level 5 milestone as well. Uh, so, we had an XP lamp, uh, which is this here, and what we get to do is we get to choose a combat skill to put this XP in, um, and we can choose any of our skills. Um, so, we've got Constitution, which is basically our life points, that relates to our life points. We've got Attack, Strength, Defense, Magic and Range, that we can put this into. So. Now, range skill hasn't yet gone past level 1, so I think we'll put it into that for the time being. Might not give us much XP, but 368 XP, okay. And that has got us straight to level 4. Brilliant. <laughs> that was a lot more than I expected. So, okay, so. Adopt a baby troll pet by talking to Corporal Keemans in the Berthop training camp. Okay. So run all the way up here. And he has a baby troll look. I could look after him. Bad luck, I don't want him. Or you could drop him in a well. I think dropping him in a well is a bit cruel. Let's let's look after him. Okay, so we now have a baby troll. You can feed the baby troll by using an item on him from your backpack. Watch out, if he likes how it tastes, it won't you won't get it back. Yeah. You can rename your baby troll. The baby troll inherits the name of the last item you fed him. Okay then. Okay, so we've done all of the extra parts here. So next part, we now have to go to Lumbridge. So this is, I believe, the last part of the um, last part of the Berthold path. Let's drop items into the bank first. We don't need those. Leave our top bank at the moment. Uh, the artisan patches um, I haven't figured out yet. Um, we'll have a look at that in um, in a little bit. Let's just finish off all the path first. Uh, these tend to be um, So sometimes just sort of time limited events, so I uh, don't always have to worry too much about that. I haven't got that on, that's okay. Got those on. Okay, so travel to Lumbridge um, in the kingdom of Miss Thalen. 
So we've already unlocked the lodestone. That's this one here. Uh, so that makes everything a lot easier. Okay, so we've just come down to to Lumbridge. Um, don't think we have much left on on this. So uh, I don't always use all of the different options that we can. Um, so it's events, yeah, tra current event that we've got going on. Ah, here we go. Travelling artisan and heaven craft unique rewards. So there's a variety of re recipes to choose from. Bring the ingredients to the master, master artisan and they'll craft out items for you. You can only work on one recipe at a time. If you swap any new recipe, any deposited ingredients will be refunded. Crafting items will level up the master artisan. As they level up, their skill improves. So we'll unlock new recipes. Ingredients you don't have can be skipped using travel up artisan patches. Learn patches from skilling as well as from clue scrolls and completing archaeology collections. If you wish to teleport to the event or any for any more information, click on the icon above. Okay, uh, I'm not too worried about that at the moment. Okay, so that's the quest list there. So this is just for showing all of the free ones that we can currently do. Two lots is there, so we'll clear that because we're now done on what we've needed. There should be, if I can find it. Hero. Here we go. Achievements. This was the bit I was looking for. Um, okay. So we can see all the different achievements. This is what we've basically been working through. Um, already. So what we're going to do is we'll have a look through Lodestone and up all of the free to play Lodestone. Okay, so Ashdale um, comes under a quest and the Wilderness Volcano we didn't do to begin with because of it being in an area that we could potentially get killed. Um, See, so yeah, can have a look through all of these. So the tracker. This tracker um, allows you to, obviously we've been choosing a path to go through. Um, so this will tell you how far you are to get in your uh, quest cape, your max cape, which is all of your skills to um, level 99. Completionist cape, um, which is completing um, a certain level of skills level achievements and things like that and comp trimmed is sort of things that have been added on that go above and beyond um, what you would do to complete a game ok 
Okay, so you can always use these as sort of something to do. Um, we're in Lumbridge at the moment, so these are all different uh, achievements we could do. They're tiered um, to easy, or beginner, easy, medium, and hard. Okay, so we've already done one. That was the one we did with the, when we were unlocking the lodestones. Uh, so for the time being, as we are done in Burthorpe, we will leave it at that and in the next video we are going to look through some of the quests. Well thank you for joining me on this video, I hope you enjoyed it. If you would like to see more, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button and I will catch you all in the next video. Take care.